Hi everyone, this is PH. So today's video will be about Spring Boot and Red Hat OpenShift Online again. We're going to showcase troubleshooting, uh, but this time with a Fusion Reactor APM tool. So here's the agenda of use uh, cases for today. So we'll start with a brief overview of a Fusion Reactor uh, cloud offering, and then we'll jump into some of the use cases. First, high CPU troubleshooting, the classic Java level deadlock, and multi services slowness. Okay, so three use cases for the day. In terms of stack, just a bit of recap there. Of course, as I was mentioning, the Red OpenShift Online for the cloud native platform, OpenJDK 11 will be used for the runtime. The application development platform or essentially microservices is really Spring Boot 3.0, the main release. Eclipse ID will be used from a coding perspective. And then, of course, monitoring tool, a Fusion Reactor, which uh, which essentially will offer us some server and container monitoring capabilities, including app services, and of course, advanced troubleshooting capabilities. Okay, so let's jump right into the use cases. Now, a bit of background first on the um, Fusion Reactor and the company. Now, the, the company has really developed uh, strong expertise in APM technology. So they really uh, started with something called Fusion, you know, offering uh, from Adobe. But then they really created an offering uh, for Java as well, uh, which is Fusion Reactor, the Java version that we're using today. And now, of course, the offering was initially on on-prem only, and now the, the offering has been evolving also uh, as a cloud-based or SaaS-based type of offering. So re I really like what these guys are doing. They are really focusing on the key features, uh, you know, from a troubleshooting perspective. Now, what you see here is the main console of a Fusion Reactor. Now, some of the main thing in my experience, right, with the APM technology is, is we need the right mixture of simplicity and advanced troubleshooting. Sometimes when the technologies are very complex to use, or they could be lacking some capability. So, so far, from a Fusion Reactor perspective, I, I find, uh, you know, the right mixture of uh, simplicity uh, and capabilities. Okay, so that's our main console we're seeing here right now. Here's what we see right now is actually um, just to set up our pod. So we're using right now, the way we did the setup was very straightforward, it took a few minutes. So essentially we did a remote at that, right? When the, the container is booting up, uh, it's going to attach and upload data right to the Fusion Reactor Cloud. So that's, you see the agent is active, right? On the pod boot up of Spring Boot runtime here. And for the purpose of this ecosystem, like you see, um, we created, uh, as I mentioned, uh, three microservices to showcase some of the uh, troubleshooting capabilities. Now, we can see the running pod here, right, which is active from uh, Red Hat OpenShift. Now, if you go on the Fusion Reactor, right, you will see uh, a mixture of servers, alerts, application, notification, and agent. You will notice one online server here. If you click on it, in our case, it's a pod, right, which is actually the pod that is attached to our OpenShift Live. Um, so it will detect that automatically. And then we just look at it, we'll start with some basic KPIs. Okay, so, so the web server, you will provide you a view of the base KPIs, like in this case, our pod is running, it's not doing anything. Now keep in mind, the monitoring tool, APM technology, given in a in an OpenShift ecosystem, when you have Kubernetes, etc., and then when, what will happen is some of the CPU will, will be detected at a node level. That's why you see a bit of chattiness on the CPU, even though my, my container is not doing anything. Okay, so now I'm just going to jump right into use case number one. So I'll show you a little bit of code, how we did it. So the, our CPU controller is essentially doing code spin and then and then to make things more interesting, we'll allocate a, a one megabyte of memory on an empty buffer. Of course, the memory will be eligible for GC on mid exit. Uh, and of course we can allocate more spinning. So we're going to generate 50,000 spin in a single request. And then we'll see what Fusion Writer is able to do for us. Okay. All right. So you see now we see CPU. This is a live view here. So you see CPU now is definitely going on the way up. It's able to detect the actual instance CPU itself. And you see now CPU is back to normal. Once you have enough data, Fusion Reactor has also the Java memory view. Okay. As we can see here, in this case, our request did generate some garbage collection, quite a bit of activity. In fact, right. Garbage collection free, but no liquid, right? If you look at the memory heap, we're still pretty back to normal. There's no leak, but we did generate impact on the GC. Why is that? Okay. So that's what we need to figure out. Like I was mentioning, remember our program generates some chattiness. So next we want to look at transaction because this is just the base view. What we want to do is a more drill down view. What happened with this request? So Fusion Reactor as a, as a nice, and that's the place I like to start normally because you had read a transaction view of some of these 
you know, top request. And then in this case, you see that's our request, right, that we sent from OpenShift to a spin of 50,000. And then Fusion Reactor will generate you a profile and a trace too. We'll start with the profile, okay, or we can look at the um, at the trace itself, okay. So in this case, what I like to do, and that's the view of the, um, of the transaction itself, is the general tab will give you base detail on the request. And then there's the details none on the stream and the memory, which is very important. Overall, use memory of the heap is, is nothing, but look at the transaction allocated memory, or what is referred as the allocation rate, right? So that one is very important because as I was mentioning earlier, we could see GC chattiness for a single request. And you can see here the allocated memory for the transaction. Look how big it was, 50,000 megabytes. A memory, which is pretty much aligned to our program, right? It was done on purpose. Uh, 50,000 iteration, one megabyte memory empty buffer. So definitely Fusion Reactor is able to detect excessive allocation rate and that one can be very useful. That's a different type of troubleshooting. Memory leak is a different story and we can see that in a future session. But in this case, it's able to detect a heavy chattiness uh, on this call. And again, a profile trace too. Now profile is really code level view where most of the time is spent. And then you can even decompile the code live as well, which is quite powerful. So, so far so good. We can see, basically go back in time, look at the calls heavy on a CPU, and then you get a call level view, including the allocation rate on memory, which is quite powerful as well. Now let's uh, go at the threads. We'll do one more spinning, uh, but this time we can do a CPU sampler. We can have a look at a CPU sampler. So we're going to generate, let's say two requests spin, and then you will see Fusion Reactor, which will do, it will start to accumulate, you see, and then you can look on the thread life as well, because it will actually count the CPU time for the thread. So for example if you have live traffic going on this is where things get powerful because you can set your top thread uh, request consuming cpu and then again you could get a quick stack like similarly as we were doing a thread them right through JSTAG, for example then we get similar stack and then same thing you can decompile quickly uh, to get a view of the code if you wish so again very powerful view of the cpu sampler that i found very uh, practical and then you can monitor from there as well so especially if you're facing chronic cpu problems it is definitely one of the place to go and of course you have the the profile view as I was mentioning earlier so you can get a profile view of the core bottleneck that one is useful to give you kind of a core level view of where most of the time is spent okay so that's that's for the first okay now so let's jump in our deadlock use case next so for the deadlock what we did we create a simple program you know it's called tlock treadlock essentially what the problem will do is is we'll attempt to to acquire uh, you know lock on two large object but in different order okay so we want to reproduce here as two requests acquiring lock in a different order to replicate a true deadlock condition okay that's the purpose here okay and then we'll see what we're getting out of a fusion reactor for this one so i'm going exercise that t lock and then i'll start with an order of one for the first threads Okay, so that'll be one request, and then I'll do the same for a second order. And then the idea, as I was mentioning, was to replicate the deadlock. Now, here, of course, we can use a JSTAC, right, at the GVM. So you see in this case, JSTAC will actually, you know, give you what's going on with the actual threads. And GVM has a built-in deadlock detector. So eventually, GVM will say, hey, you have a, a deadlock between these two threads, right? And I can generate, let's say, a few more. Let's say one more request, different order. So eventually GVM will detect a deadlock. You can see that, right? Deadlock detector, that's a built-in feature of the GVM. Nothing new here, uh, if you're familiar with this concept. Now if we go back to Fusion Reactor, let's have a look at the thread visualizer. So good news is yes, Fusion Reactor was able to detect the deadlock, which is good. There's another feature called a thread visualizer. That one is the live breakdown of the threads, and then you can break it down per user, CPU, and weight. Keep in mind a deadlock or, or threadlock contention problem, it's more blocking scenario, so you will see exactly that happening. Now one thing I would recommend to address is probably just to do a bit of a color tagging of the deadlock. Like in this case, we can see thread one and two are in deadlock state. These threads are still shown as green, runnable could be useful to color tag them as red you know simple recommendations simple things to uh, improve here but that said the, the key feature is really the blocked here on the the actual threads and then of course you can quickly identify which threads and then when you go back to the the sampler for example the other things you need to keep in mind is that it will also keep some of the state of the request as well okay so you can actually visualize and have a stack of these threads as well so if you go at the thread state there's a transaction acquired right for these threads one and three you see that here you can either get the stack trace or jump right into the transactions right so if you look at the stack trace fusion reactor will definitely detect the blocking string as we can see right detecting the blocked condition right here 
which is quite good and of course you could also jump as i was mentioning you know from a trade state perspective you could jump right away at that transaction if you wish now we're going back to the previous view as your recall and then you can look again at the profile trace to see where deadlock is happening right which essentially in our case it's mostly sleeping but it's stuck in a deadlock so definitely will help you troubleshoot these issues plus as i said it's able to detect uh, some of the deadlock condition at the thread so definitely the uh, the trade visualizer is is quite practical for troubleshoot issues plus you have persistence of these requests so you can go back in time as well now let's go with our last use case so for the use case number three what we did we have a, a request called my account so essentially what it will do is one microservice calling another microservice so i see my account and then my account will turn and call another service to fetch uh, let's say banking information again it will generate a random response time okay so i can probably generate a few of those now back to the transaction time you know, same thing here, you know, transaction will detect some of these requests uh, running here. And there we go. You see, you start to see the requests coming up, three of them. Like I said, the, the program will generate random response time. So that's why you see fluctuation to mimic it all more in the real world. So 24 seconds, each of them has again a profile and trace as it to it, which is great. So yeah, we can have a quick look at this one. That one took 44 seconds. And this is where things get powerful with the tracing and sub transaction. So again, that one is identified as very slow. We had the detail here, like we had earlier. Can have a look at the profile trace uh, code level view. But before we get there, I want to showcase the tracing capabilities. This is where things get interesting. Okay, because remember this call, and then you start to see that breakdown, right? String request mapping, calling into the HTTP client. And then you will even see some of the HTTP call, you see? So depending on the complexity of your topology, if you have a database, etc., uh, Fusion R will detect definitely uh, sub transactions. And this is where things get quite powerful and can really help you troubleshoot complex topologies you know with a mixture of database HTTP call etc and again all persisted right so you can go back in time even if for example you have one call that would crash your pod for example yes you may have traces from a log management perspective like ELK is still available now that said uh, Fusion Reactor will have a safeguard right will have actually a persistence of that transaction so you can really go back in time and see what happened including what what happened in the code so you see that URL call uh, and then the profile view that one is a more complex view code level of view will show you actually where time was spent okay so you can really analyze this and figure out like in our case no surprising we see the actual rest template right which is used to make the outbound call and we see quite a bit of time spent on the socket read right because it's waiting for a remote service that's exactly what we see here from a code level standpoint so very powerful feature i would encourage you to um, give it a try especially with a complex topology it should be able to auto discover uh, your topology accordingly so in this case it was able to detect microservices and this is where we start to get more value with this technology uh, as your topology and the microservices getting more and more complex uh, i see more value with the tool uh, will be extracted right with more complex topology so, so all in all, with the three use cases, right? I think in, in conclusion, from a fusion router perspective, I think at the end of the day, it's the right mixture I see of simplicity and troubleshooting capabilities. And of course, uh, it's production ready, so you can even attach it, let's say, in a non-prod environment. Uh, you could attach it, let's say, to your CI/CD pipeline, for example, uh, and then you could use it, of course, for production. Uh, so definitely different type of use cases, uh, and then you could attach it to an existing environment. So both, if you're creating from inception or existing one. Uh, help you troubleshoot some performance problem that you could you know your environment could be plagued with now from a data security perspective of course it's a cloud offering that we're using uh, it depends on your need and customer policies some customer I work with wants to manage their APM fully on-prem and Fusion Router can do this you can set up the agent also on-prem some customer are okay to offload metadata right to public cloud from an APM perspective with the right level of security policies in place so definitely depending of your customer needs Fusion Reactor can be can support different deployment models as well okay so so i really hope you enjoyed that short demo uh, we may get back with a part two with uh, you know extra feature there's also extra features allowing you even to stop some of the threads or even do more deep dive debugging so that could be explored as a second session but i really hope that you enjoyed that overview and please feel free to let me know if you have any questions thank you have a good day